Hey guys, welcome to Let's Learn C++, lesson 2.5, I believe, or 2.6, one of those two. I'm, keep, I'm losing track now. Uh, this one's going to be on functions. Now, you know about the main function, and you know what it looks like. It's got integer main, and then it has these parentheses that are empty. And then you have the opening set bracket, and then you have all your code in between, and then you have the closing set bracket. And there's always a return statement unless there's a, a void. So, with uh, creating your own functions, like a uh, customized function, you're going to have to go about the same process. Now, this right here at the top here, integer add parentheses int comma int parentheses uh, semicolon. This is the prototype for the function. You don't have to have it unless it's a certain thing and I'll show you exactly why you have to have it after we go through how to make it. So, uh, looking at our actual function right here that I have highlighted, you can see we have an a type of integer and then the function is called add just like our, our main function was, was an integer type and it was called main. This one's integer and it's called add. And then it has the opening and closing parentheses but this one has stuff in this inside of the parentheses. It has two integers integer num1 and then a comma integer num2 these are called the parameters also known as the arguments so these two things are temporary variables they're scoped inside of the function and inside of the function alone which means that at the very beginning of the of the function uh, they are they're created and right when the the function ends they're destroyed so in other words we can have these variables down here, integer, answer, num1, and num2. These three variables are completely different than these three up here, num1, num2, and answer in here. Because this one right here is scoped inside of the, the function as well. So it's also destroyed uh, at the end of the function. So in other words, these three variables have the same names, but they're completely different. So inside of this function, we can see that we have the two variables, num1, num2, and then we have the integer called answer and it acquires a value of num1 plus num2 which is these two variables so the two variables that are put inside the arguments are going to be added together and answer is given that value and then the function is going to return the variable called answer instead of returning zero it's going to return answer now what that does for us if you go back down here to the main we're going to see how we actually utilize this so this is going to be update to our calculator program, calculator 2.0, and we're going to we're going to enter a number and save it in in num1. Now this is the num1 for uh, main function, and then enter num2 for this one right here, because the main function has no idea that these num1 and num2 even exist because it's scoped inside of the function. So we're using these num1 and num2 right here. So we're going to grab two values and we're going to grab a character for option choosing the operation. Now right now all I have is the option for uh, adding. So if the option is equal to add, then we're going to say the answer, which is the answer for uh, the main function, answer is equal to add parentheses num1 num2 parentheses. Now this is where we call the function. This see we have the name of the function which is add you can verify that up here it's called add and then the two arguments are two integers int num1 and int num2 or if you look at the prototype it's just integer and integer which means we have to put two integers in there now add num1 and num2 if you look up in here these two variables num1 and num2 are indeed integers so we're putting two integers inside the arguments here and then just pretend that this is going to correspond so this num1 has, has a certain value, and that value is going to be transferred into this slot right here. And then num2 here has a certain value. That value is going to be transferred into this slot right here. It's like a slot machine. Just plug the variables in, and then this variable num1 acquires the value that was put here, and this num2 acquires the value that was put here, which are then used here to add together and give answer a value. And then this function, add, returns those two numbers that were added together and then whatever's returned to a function is what is giving the function's value so that means answer now has the function or sorry answer now has the value of these two numbers 
added together because it was returned added together from the function. I don't know if that makes a whole lot of sense, but if you play around with this stuff, I promise you, you will get it. You will understand just lickety-split after you start playing around with this. So let's add in a second function. Lazy programmer here. I'm going to copy and paste wherever I get in it a chance. Whoops. Int sub for subtract. Now let's just go ahead and say subtract. Int subtract. And then we're going to have two more integers, num1 and num2. And the answer is num1, num2 also. So as you can see, we're using the same variables again. But it's like, it's different. Because this function doesn't know about these three variables. And this one doesn't know about these three variables because they're scoped inside the function. So they're created and destroyed within the execution of the function. So now we have int subtract int int prototype there for our subtract. Now, let me go ahead and explain this, the prototype. The prototype is just, just to make the program aware that the function exists. So let me comment this out real quick. I'll do it like this. Do it the long way. All right, so then, whoops. Take that, I'm gonna cut it, put it down here. So now, let me show you what happens when we don't have the prototype. I'm just gonna take out both of these prototypes. Now we don't have a prototype. Now, if we run this again, with the addition function up here at the very top above the main function you can see that it runs perfectly fine it runs exactly like it's supposed to but what if we put the addition function below the main function you can see that the build fails down here in the bottom it says build failed add identifier not found. So right here, we're trying to call this, this function add, but in the line of the program here, add hasn't been created yet. Add is, is, is defined down here, whereas we're trying to call it up here. So if we put in the prototype, now the program knows that add is there before it gets to this call. So now, That's one of those weird one-time one errors. All right, there we go. Enter a number, four, six, add. So now it works perfectly like it's supposed to, just because we have this, this uh, prototype here. Now, I used to think prototypes were pretty much useless, but then I got into programming bigger programs, and I realized that I needed them. So you need them too, depending on the, the situation. So let's go ahead and put add back up here at the top so we can see it better. Let's put subtract back up there. Whoops. All right, so now we have our subtract function. So now let's add in an if statement, lazy programmer here. Take out this comment. Subtract num1, num2. So now we have a minus one, that's an else if. And let's get ourselves a multiplication and a division one. And we'll call this one molt, and we'll call this one div. And there we go. So now we have all of our our functions here. Oh, my bad. Okay. So, see how I can't use div now because it says that div, div t div int int is a function that's already taken by the C++ language. So I'm going to have to say it division. That can get real annoying from time to time. But now that I changed the name, you can see that it works perfectly. So let's say 5 and 6, we'll add, we get 11, that's right. 
5 and 6, let's subtract. We get negative 1, that's right. 5 and 6, we multiply, that's 30, that's right. 5 and 6, we divide, we get 0 because it's integer division. Now, we could make these two variables floats. So, let's do that. Hang on, I'm just going to go ahead and make these floats real quick just so it'll work better. All right, so uh, let's go ahead. All right, so let's run this real quick and do the division. Five and six divide, we get zero. Oh, here we go. We get point eight three 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 three. So that's correct. Okay, now I'm gonna teach you how to overload an operator. So to do this, you can keep your calculator the same and just add something to it or something. But I'm gonna delete all this and we're gonna stick with adding. Just real quick. Okay, we're going to say if option is equal to, now this is actually not going to be a symbol that you'll probably be using, but I'm going to say if the option is equal to a greater than sign, then we're going to do something different with the add function. We're going to say add again, add. All right, but to overload an operator, all that means is the same function, different arguments. So we're going to have another add function. See how it, it's going to be called add again. But now we're going to say int num3. See how we're adding just another uh, another argument to it? So it's the same exact function, add. It's got the same name, but it's got another argument. And most likely you're going to make it do something different. So mine's just going to add three numbers rather than two. And just to, let's see here, num3. Uh, just to speed things up, I'm just not going to take another input. And I'm just going to set num3 always equal to 5. So if they enter in a greater than sign, we're going to activate the add function. And it's going to be num1 plus num2 plus 5, always. So let's run this real quick. All right, so now we're going to say 5 and 7, choose an operation plus sign. So it's just going to add those two. 5 plus 7 is 2. So if we enter plus sign, it adds num1 and num2. Now, if we run it again, 5 and 7, choose an operation we say greater than, it's going to add three numbers. It's going to add num1, 5, plus num2, 7, which gives us the number from last time. And then it's going to add another 5 to it and returns our answer as 17. So, 5, 6 plus, we get 11. And then 5, 6 greater than, we get 16. Just like that. And he, you could go a step further as to add, have it add four variables. It's all up to you, all completely up to you. So, expound upon what you learned in this lesson. This is one of the most useful lessons you will learn before you get into object-oriented programming. And you really need to know this. You need to know this because object-oriented programming revolves around functions because there's going to be member functions, which you'll have to know with the back of your hand. So if you learn this now, it'll make object-oriented so much easier. So work with these functions. Get better at them. Work with them before you move on to the next lesson that I film. And make sure you're good at these. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, Google is your greatest resource once again. So that's all for this lesson. Thanks for watching. Remember to follow me on Twitter. Um, and I would like to thank Winfreak. Uh, I'll, I'll have a link to his English channel in my description of the video. But uh, I want to thank him for giving me this new screen recorder. Uh, it's, a real, it's a real nice screen recorder and it's 
it, it, it comes with a real cool video editor so uh, my videos may be a little bit different but probably not that much different so uh, just thank you for that and I'll see you in the next lesson